Okay, this video is a book review. Here is the book. It's called PEO Solution, and PEO means parent oil, parent essential oils. The author is Brian Peskin, and he's like a engineer. Um, the co-author is Jay Rowan, Robert J. Rowan, who's a physician and a vegetarian. Okay, so what was interesting about this book? Basically, his bottom line is that he thinks omega-3 fish oil supplements are harmful and a waste of time. He thinks that algae omega-3 supplements are also uh, a waste of time if they're giving you DHA and EPA. The, the point he was getting at, parent means the only essential, um, the only essential fatty acids are the source fatty acids for omega-6, linoleic acid, and the source um, fatty acid for omega-3s, and that's alpha-linolenic acid. And then C18-2 for linoleic acid, the omega-6-1 means 18 carbons and two double bonds. For ALA, it's C18, 18 carbons, and three double bonds. However, he thinks that it's a waste of time and it's harmful to people's health to be taking the big, long, omega-3s like EPA which is C20, 20 carbons, 5 double bonds and DHA, C22, uh, 22 carbons and 6 double bonds and the reason why he thinks these are bad to take as a supplement is he says they're so rapidly prone to spoilage, to becoming rancid, to lipid peroxidation that by the time you get them into your body they're peroxidized and he believes they're probably going to be detrimental to your health. <clears throat> so I thought that was interesting because you hear so much hype about omega-3s. In addition, he the big thing that got my attention is he said that these long-chain omega-3s when supplemented are toxic to mitochondria. And I'm like, is he just making this up? But I found three papers real quick that supported that statement that they're harmful to mitochondria. The mitochondria, you know, omega-6s get such a bad reputation in the popular press, if you will, but that's not fair because these linoleic acids, they are by far the most important um, fatty acid for your mitochondria and your mitochondria would make all your energy so they're super important you know to say that linoleic omega-6s aren't important would be like saying electricity is not important to humans no it's very important um, the other thing is he pointed out that according to his study of the literature and he does know a lot about uh, lipids and fatty acids he's de devoted years of his career to it and he's a smart guy this Brian Peskin he says the amount of uh, ALA converted to the long chain omega 3s, EPA, and DHA is minuscule in the ballpark of 1 to 5%, depending on the paper, and even less to EPA uh, relative to DHA. And he says people taking these EPA and DHA supplements are basically giving themselves big overdoses of these fatty acids, 20 to 500 times more than their body needs. And that is high risk to cause side effects. They'll increase the likelihood of becoming obese. You know, it's complete high caloric density. An oil is liquid fat. They cause insulin resistance. And diabetes is a terrible disease. So they increase your risk of diabetes. That's not good. Um, he says that saturated fat in plasma membranes, for example, is actually protective of the PUFAs, polyunsaturated fatty acids. Um, you know, from a chain reaction of lipid peroxidation. He says it helps. Um, he does sell PEO supplements. So the guy has a bias. He wants to sell his own version of LA and ALA. So that's a, so in a sense, fish oil with the long chain omega-3s is com competition for what he sells. What I thought was interesting as well is his co-author, the physician Rowan, says that he doesn't take the supplements because he gets all the PEOs, parent essential oils, uh, that he needs just from eating plant foods. And that's I think, is a smart thing to do. Now, most people aren't willing to eat plant foods, um, and therefore, what Peskin says is, therefore, they should buy his supplement. Okay, so I don't know anything about a supplement. I've never taken it. I've never seen it. But that was his rationale. Another part of his rationale was this idea that um, <clears throat> the omega-6s in the, in the membrane, linoleic acid, were real important for oxygen uh, travel across a membrane, whatever membrane it might be. So what I had learned in med school was that basically oxygen just diffuses across a plasma membrane and other membranes. It's small, it's relatively nonpolar, so it can do that. Okay, and that was pretty simple-minded. And then he's saying, oh, <clears throat> it's interacting like with the methylene bridge, uh, carbons, and this facilitates reversible bonding, facilitates its ability to cross the membrane, traverse the membrane, diffuse through the membrane. 
But then along came other research, and I just talked about this in a previous lecture, where they found that there are channels, membrane proteins. Like, for example, in a red blood cell, it's both the aquaporin channel, which is, you know, we typically think of aquaporin being associated with water and rhesus being associated with the rhesus antigens on a red blood cell. But he was saying that they are important, for, according to these papers, they're real important for oxygen transmission. And according to these papers, they were saying that um, at least probably in the ballpark and 90%, maybe more oxygen was transported through these proteins, which makes these plasma membranes less important for that purpose. But still, it's not an accident that cardiolipin, the phospholipid, excuse me, fatty acid in the inner mitochondrial membrane, each one of them has four fatty acid tails, and all four of them typically are linoleic acids, the, the omega-6. So that's super important. All your energy of life comes from it. And why do they have such a persistently repeated structure? Because it facilitates binding to the, um, the electron uh, transport chain complexes that also pump the protons in the inner mitochondrial membrane. And so if you don't have those cardiolipin-type phospholipids made out of omega-6 linoleic acid, then you don't get good mitochondrial function. So that was that was something I did not know, and that was almost kind of shocked me. Omega-3 supplementations, in his opinion, and I think he was especially referring to the, the EPA and DHA, they're toxic to mitochondria. And I found three papers real quick supporting that. I talk about that all in my longer lectures. I've given a couple longer lectures recently on this very subject of, uh, and I go into great detail about all the different fats and everything. I gave a specific lectures about that. Okay, arachidonic acid is much more helpful than its reputation implies. Because, yeah, people are kind of taught in the lay press, though, that omega-6s are evil, bad, inflammatory, and omega-3s are wonderful, good, anti-inflammatory. But there's a lot more to it than that. Um, let's see. Overall, in humans, we tend to have about 10 times as much omega-6 as omega-3, according to him, LA greater than ALA. In the brain, he says the ratio is even greater than that. It's more like 100 to 1. In skin, 1,000 to 1 more omega-6 than omega-3. So he's kind of making the point that omega-3s are totally overrated, uh, according to him. Um, let's see. That was a key point. He actually said that it takes 17 pounds of fish to make one capsule of fish oil. And that sounds like more fish than you would think, but that's what he says for what it's worth. So anyway, I think that's it for this lecture here. I thought that was kind of interesting, and um, <clears throat> he did a good job of making you not want anything to do with omega-3 fish oil. Uh, so anyways, uh, if you're interested in, in, in dietary lipids, I got much longer lectures on these subjects where I go into a lot more detail.